Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we will talk about single women. We'll explore the differences between the discourse of a Western single woman and a single woman from a more traditional culture. We'll also hear from a woman discussing why women are buying more houses in the United States. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you enjoy what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and give us a like. We'd also love to hear your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. Four reasons why it's way better to meet your person in your 30s. For one, you're no longer dating people who have potential. You're dating the complete full package, somebody who is already who they want to be. Number two, you're already financially stable, so you can do whatever you want. You can go take an amazing trip. You can get better gifts from this person. All of the things. Number three, the timeline is pretty much out the window. You already know yourself. You know who you want. You know what it looks like when they come into your life. So the timeline is up to you. Number four, you by now know how to handle your emotions so much better. You've done the work on yourself, so you're not going to be running into these roadblocks and fighting as much as you might have if you met in your 20s. This 30-year-old woman reminds me of an insurance salesman who starts telling you the story because their insurance company is the best and everything it offers until you sign, then you realize the headache that company is. That's how these women who have hit the wall are. One gets into the relationship because he's in love, ignoring all the red flags believing in their words. When you come and marry them, you realize it was all a lie. Just by saying they give better gifts, it's laughable. When we all know the modern woman gives nothing in return for nothing. But in one thing, I agree, they change with age. In their youth, they went for the excitement, only wanting the current Chad who rides the carousel of emotions. At 30, they change their tune because they know time is running out. They need to snag the beta provider with whatever beauty they have left to provide long-term financial security and get that coveted ring. That's why I say the wall does not forgive. Let's talk about the five tips you should be doing as a single person before you met the one. Number one, enjoy your alone time. You might be thinking like, I'm single, San. I'm already alone. But trust me, trust the process. Being alone and having that as a routine, having you embracing yourself at the end of the day, you're going to need that to pick yourself up for later. And I'll explain. Number two, healing from your past relationship. Now, if you think to yourself, Sam, I've never had a relationship before, never even had a boyfriend. Yeah, but relationship doesn't mean love relationship. Does it mean a romance relationship? It could also mean your mother relationship. A lot of us girls have complicated relationship with our mother and healing from all of those scars. It's going to help you further down the road in your loving relationship. Someone that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Number three, hang out with your girlfriend. Go out there and have fun. Go parties. Embrace your femininity because you're going to need that when you had a boyfriend or a loved one or a husband because he have a lot of testosterone, girl. You're going to have to embrace who you are as the feminine energy because when you bring that into that relationship, oh, it's going to be so beautiful because you have so much to give. You know who you are as a female, as the embodiment of femininity. He needs that. He loves that. And he wants you here for it. And I say that is because of a lot of us single girl embody this masculine energy. I don't need a man. I can do it myself. I don't need you to bring, bring me flower. I can do it myself. Yeah, we all know that you can, but that doesn't mean that you should. Number four, this is your best time to advance in your career. Oh, girl, you can always advance your career with a man. I know, I know. But hear me out here. The beginning of your relationship take a lot of your time. I cannot imagine me trying to build a career, pulling those all night or long nighter, having a man. They also take a lot of my energy too. Nurturing to a relationship is no joke. But when you had multiple things all at once, it kind of tears things apart. So meanwhile, you are single right now. Focus on those. Focus in what you can be five. Do what you can manifest, but don't chase. We women never come out and chase a man. 
If he want to, he would. Okay? What differences exist in the mindset of an Eastern girl compared to a Western woman? While girls here only think about having fun, going out with Chad, who brings nothing to the table but his seed, making money with the blue app, thinking only about traveling, getting drunk at parties, and getting pumped by Chad. This Eastern woman thinks about connecting with her feminine energy to establish a better relationship as a wife. She talks about staying healthy to avoid causing problems in the relationship or getting involved with so many men to avoid bringing trauma to future relationships. She only thinks about giving her all when she's in a relationship. You don't hear her with the typical discourse of Western women to go out, have fun, and live their youth. Instead, she thinks about getting married, working on her career with her husband, and connecting her feminine energy within the family. This essence is what every brother needs from a woman. That's why more and more men grab their passports and go to countries where women are more feminine, where the man's figure is respected, and you feel like you can form a team with a woman. Just hearing her say that you can advance your career with your man. They always think about what's best for the relationship, not the individualism of the modern Western woman who thinks she can do everything alone. Brothers, get your passports. That single women report being happier than women in relationships with men. You know what else single women like to do? Buy their own homes. Single women are buying more homes than single men, to the tune of about two million more a year. And that's in spite of the fact that they earn on average about 17 cents less a dollar than men. So one of the areas that I specialize in is with people that are getting separated and divorced. So men, women, a lot of times the women come to me because I'm a woman. Um, and I can tell you that going through that process with them and seeing them be able to buy a home on their own and have that space be theirs, be their safe space, it's, um, it's pretty empowering. It's a cool thing. In a nutshell, you're a woman telling other women how to use the money they take from men because it's true. She says women earn less. But I heard her say she specializes in women who are getting divorced, seeing how women buy houses after divorce is empowering. If every man could leave with a check he didn't work for to finance a house, every man in the country would have a home. But what happens is that this country doesn't want progress for men. It wants progress for women. If you move in with a woman just to live together for three to five years, she has the right to your house. In almost all divorces, the man loses the house or ends up having to sell it. So as she says, she specializes in women after divorce. Let's imagine a woman marries a man with a house worth $300,000. If they separate, this man has $100,000 in his bank account. Due to divorce, he has to give her half of everything, which equals $150,000 from the sale of his house and $50,000 from his savings. How the hell do you not buy a house with the $200,000 they gave you afterward? Who loses out on all this? The man who ends up without a house and without savings. But the woman walks away with a check that can significantly improve her life. Who wouldn't be happy with that? How are you still single? I wanted to answer this question on behalf of all the 50 plus year old women who are like me, single, and not really trying to be paired up. It's a question that I get asked a lot. It used to tick me off. I thought it was an implication that it's not normal. Maybe there's something wrong with me. But I know some intentions are good when people ask me that question. I think I would be happier if I was with somebody. Truth be told, I'm pretty happy with my life as is. I ran across this video by Matthew McConaughey and it really summed up how I feel. He said there was a point in his life where he was searching everywhere for the one. Every woman he came across, he asked himself, is this the one? And one day he decided he was going to accept whatever outcome would be. Shortly thereafter, he met his wife. And that's kind of where I'm at. I like my life. Sure, sometimes would it be great to have a partner, but I've accepted what is right now. I'm not forcing or chasing because what is meant to be for me will be. What will be for you is the wall, because the wall does not forgive. This just reminds me of the man who screwed economically and physically in life. You ask him why he's like that, and he tells you a thousand stories, but you realize he's simply like that because he never wanted to make an effort to change. He preferred to let life pass him by, ending up as a mediocre. If this woman is so resigned, she might as well buy a cat, because in this life, either you take charge and make things happen, or you resign yourself to losing. Many women spent their youth, as she says, looking for the right one, the Prince Charming, the man who met all the standards, the perfect gentleman. But this gentleman doesn't exist because nobody is perfect. 
so they leave all the good men who wanted to build something with them aside. Many go for the Chad, others prefer their careers. But as the saying goes, he who doesn't know where he's going, no matter what path he takes, ends up lost. These women end up hitting the wall because they won't settle for less than what they think they deserve. But as I've said on other occasions, you can't dictate your own price. The market does. In this case, it was scarce for the man they wanted. So they end up hitting the wall because the wall does not forgive. <laughs> for perfectionists and anyone who struggles with low self-worth. When I was healing my own patterns of perfectionism and started to more closely listen to my own self-talk, it often sounded like I'm bad at that, I made a mistake, I don't look good in that outfit, I'm not doing good enough, I'm not good enough for that person. It was always about being bad or wrong or broken or not enough. I would spend so much of my time trying to perfect myself, whether it was like perfecting my image or perfecting a project or something that I was working on. I needed to have everything just right in order to not talk to myself so poorly. So to make the jump from I'm bad and I'm doing everything wrong to I'm great, I'm amazing, everything's perfect and fine was too big of a, of a gap to fill. And so for me, one of the, the shifts I started making that had a really big impact was being able to tell myself it's good enough. If I needed to get an email out or finish a project and I was stressing about every little detail of it, being able to sit with the knowing that it's good enough for whatever the goal of the task was. Or if I'm getting ready to go out for the evening and I'm like picking and critiquing myself, being able to say, you know what, it's good enough to get myself out the door. It was a huge shift for me in my own mental health and my sense of self-worth because I no longer needed to focus on being perfect. I just needed to be good enough to get the task done, to get myself out the door, to do what I needed to do to move on with my life. But then I started to notice after I practiced that for a long time, for years, that every time I would say to myself, it's good enough, it was no longer from the energy of giving myself permission to just move forward and let myself off the hook without being perfect. It was actually coming from more of a place of like, I'm not good enough again. Like, yeah, it's, it's good enough, but it's not good. So then my new challenge to myself or my new invitation was every time I found myself being a little bit critical and going, eh, it's good enough. Instead, I would say, you know what? Actually, it's good. I'm good. It's all good. And good doesn't need to be perfect. Good is subjective. I can decide what good is and I can decide how I feel about myself. The way you speak to yourself matters. So start listening and be willing to call yourself out and make little shifts that feel realistic and believable for you so that you can move towards kinder self-talk. Little by little, that is one of the components of how you build self-worth. Every time I see a single woman at 30 who has been like that for many years, I always hear this typical motivational speech about trusting yourself more, changing your internal language, keeping up your motivation, manifesting your man. All this nonsense to try to escape reality, which is as lonely as the sun at noon on a cloudless day. <laughs> Brothers, the wall does not forgive. At least the other girl I showed talked about how women should connect with their feminine energy to be a better wife. But look at how it's the opposite for Western women. It's more about them being stronger and more independent. This discourse of always strengthening oneself and being more solitary, that's why it's a struggle to connect with a man. Because if you mentally adapt to being able to do everything alone, when a man wants to do something with you, you won't let him. It's like the other girl said, we know he can give you flowers or take you out to eat, but let go of control, let your man do it. These women are the opposite. They're like, if you need something, do it yourself. That's why they end up hitting the wall, alone, strong, and independent. <laughs> We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about women from the Pacific, their way of viewing relationships and interacting with men? Do you think women in their 30s are the best partners for men? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.